control. He cometh forth like a cloud. He is cut down. He fled also as a shadow that continued not. We brought nothing into this world. And it is certain.
Andrew Brooks, New Testament scripture. Dr. Jerome Price, the Old Testament scripture. My assistant pastor, Paul Harvey. Would you not bow your heads as we go before the throne of grace? Father, first and foremost, we enter your gates with thanksgiving. Because that is the protocol of your word. You said enter your gates with thanksgiving and come into your courts with praise. So, Father, all we know to do in times and seasons like this that are unexplainable, that are beyond our dimension, our understanding, are beyond some things that we could ever comprehend. Father, we thank you. We bless and praise your wonderful name, God, with shouts of joy and victory and triumph and camp of the righteous of the Lord, eternal Heavenly Father. It is a blessing to even know that our sister was born again, filled with your spirit and saved, eternal Heavenly Father, and she's getting to see what the fullness of the gospel looks like, God. Well, we can only imagine what you, what's going on. But Father, we come celebrating, we come thanking, we come magnifying. Father, that in this place, there may be people here that are hurting from other things. There may be sicknesses in somebody else's body. But we know that you are healer. We know that you are deliverer. God, we know that you're never too late and you're always on time. So Daddy, with great adoration, as we bow before you, we bless you and thank you. We praise you for your greatness, God. Hallelujah. For you are great and you are worthy to be praised. We worship you in the beauty and the magnitude of the power of your holiness. You promised, Daddy. You promised him. You said if we call you, you would answer. So, Daddy, as we stand here, two or three are gathered together, touching and agreeing, I'm calling you and I'm asking you. Hallelujah. To bring peace to wounded hearts, God. To bring joy unspeakable and full of glory. God, let our shout and our praise be with the fact that we are brave because we know, hallelujah, that all of us must pass by this way. Hallelujah, but the blessedness in it is that we'll get to see you, Jesus, face to face. You're able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think God so as we shout hallelujah, hallelujah. as we shout hallelujah, hallelujah as we shout hallelujah, hallelujah. heaven invades the earth and steals the avenger God I magnify us Father, we have searched the world over, but there is nobody like you. So because we sense your presence in this place, we bow, O oh King of Grace. Thank you for your mercy today. Thank you for your mercy today. Bless this family. Knit them together even stronger. And those that don't know you. We make an inquiry before you. Eternal Heavenly Father that they will get to know you. That they will get to know the King. That they will get to know the Savior. And they will be filled with your spirit. For this daughter, this vessel, was a living epistle read of men. Saved and sanctified and lived her life as unto you. So that all her family follow her example of righteousness and holiness. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. The Old Testament scripture is coming out of the book of Psalms. 
the 24th division. The Lord, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. The world and they that dwell therein. For he hath founded it upon the seas and established it upon the floods. Who shall ascend into the hill of the Lord or who shall stand in his holy place? He that hath clean hands and a pure heart who hath not lifted up his soul into vanity nor sworn deceitfully, he shall receive the blessing from the Lord and righteousness from the God of his salvation. The New Testament scripture is coming from the book of St. John, the 14th chapter, the first verses. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. And whither I go, ye know, and the way ye know. Thomas said unto him, Lord, we know not whether thou goest, and how can we know the way? Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man come unto the Father but by me. The word of the Lord is blessed. I hope y'all don't mind, but we're going to do it the way that Mina liked it. Y'all, I got dressed up today to come to a celebration. I got dressed today to come to lift them up. Two things and two places Mina would go, even when she was sick. She'd go to work, and she'd go to church. Mina didn't come in here to be seen or to be heard, but Mina came into those doors for a move of God. So we're just going to go forth for a few moments with praise and worship. Just the way that Mina liked it. She would walk in and she would sit right on that end over there. And praise and worship would begin to go forth. And you see Mina stand up and begin to magnify the Lord. Now I don't know about y'all, but I come to celebrate. I didn't put on my tuxedo to come look at you. But I put on my tuxedo to come and lift them up. I come to celebrate. Is there anybody in the house that come to lift them up today? Is there anybody in the house that come to magnify them? I don't mean to be negative, but is there anybody that wanna magnify? Is there anybody that wanna celebrate? Come on, down the Bible, let's lift it up. Why all heaven? 
songs in the choir is going to come to you today with awesome. Come on, Miana, sing a little bit of this song with us. This is her daughter, y'all. Come on, give the baby a hand. She's going to sing for her mom today. She's going to get a piece of that song today. At this time, the choir is coming to you with awesome.
If you believe he's awesome, you ought to just clap your hands. We want to have these tributes. We're going to do it in three parts. The three most important things to this queen was God, her family, and her career. And at this time, we ask for a few individuals from her job to just come quickly, two minutes each, and just come and share with us some things about this wonderful woman of God. Anybody here from her, from her job? I know there are people here from her job. Come forth, please. Come on, give them a hand. Don't be afraid. We're all family in here. We were all connected to her one way or another. And we praise God for you all. Mina was on her job for, same job for, 30 plus years. And I think all these old us, because I think they really didn't go there to buy groceries. <laughs> they went there to see Nina. <laughs> uh, my cousin was even saying on Facebook, she said, I would go all the way over on the other side of town to go to that office. Just so I could see Nina. Amen. So we praise God for you all. And just take a few moments and share with us. and I was a district manager for Albany for about eight years and Nina um, was in the store that I first got to train in and learn um, my career and so she taught me so much and as a young person starting my job off it was it was kind of a scary experience for me but I think um, I'm so thankful that Nina was there because, again, she taught me what I knew in the store. She had my back when things went wrong. She was patient with me when I messed up. And I can't think of a more strong and dependable and a beautiful woman. And I, uh, I'm just so thankful that I had to have that as support for me, learning. And all of the people that she touched, I mean, I think I hired a lot of people because of me. <laughs> Look at that, some of you guys in here. I fired them too. Well, hey, it is what it is, but. Um, and that smile was infectious. Oh, yes. And that's kind of the legacy that I have with her. I remember, and I'm, I'm, uh, I'll make it quick, guys, but I, I said two minutes. I remember I, like, when I was first training, I'd be in the store and I'd be hungry, and Nina and I would share like a whole, a whole package of the Hawaiian rolls. And, uh, to this day, you guys, when I change out a uh, shutter, I can hear Mina's voice in the back of my head, like, you better get all that stuff off the floor, because I'm not doing it. So, um, again, you guys, I'm just thankful for this beautiful woman and being able to cross her path and her strength, and I hope her legacy lives on in all of you guys. Thank you. Hi, I'm Shelly. I worked with Nina. Um, she trained me at the East University store while the West Des Moines store was being built. And 
was just, uh, she was such a patient person. Uh, like someone said, her smile was infectious. She just made the, the job go by just, you know, it was so much easier and just, she just, you could tell her pride in her job and uh, she had a really good relationship with the manager, Tim, and you know, they kind of joked back and forth and just made it such a pleasure to work there and she just uh, was just so patient with everybody and just, you know, you wanted to work there because of her. She was just such a beautiful person. I'm so honored to meet her and so glad I did. blessed and grateful to have to know Mina for the last year over at the, um, the Aldi over at Jordan Creek. Uh, I got to spend a lot of very long nights with her on Tuesdays resetting the um, Isle of Shame, as everyone knows, <laughs> with all the good stuff. Um, so a lot of long late nights, a lot of personal one-on-one -on -one time getting to know this beautiful and wonderful, strong-willed, you know, ball of fire. <laughs> Um, just wonderful and amazing. Got to learn a lot from her in just the short time that I got to spend with her. Got to meet and spend time with her kids, you know, working in a store, coming in and hanging out in the evenings. Um, they're wonderful, uh, delightful kids, and I am truly grateful to get to have spent time with your mom. She is just amazing person and I know I will do everything in my power to try to be an ounce of the woman that she was. Um, my name's Shelby. I got the pleasure to be Nina's district manager over the last year but I've known her for four years and she truly was a woman full of class, amazing work ethic. They do not make people like Nina anymore. And what I loved about her most is she talked about her family all the time. I feel like I know you guys. And she was just never stressed. She just had so much faith, and she's going to be truly missed. Similarly to Alicia, I'm a district manager, and I have been with Aldi for 16 years. So. And I first started with Aldi Nina was on the, uh, the university store, and Tim Davis, who we call, they were partners in crime. So whatever Tim didn't know, me and you, and vice versa. And a quick story, I was walking down the aisles once, I was brand new to the business, and I look up, and there's this beautiful woman standing with the whitest, whitest teeth, beautiful smile. And Tim looked at me and he said, if I lead you down the wrong path, you make sure you go to her. Because whatever she says goes. And then I said from then on out, I knew that she was someone that we you know, could always depend on. She was a faithful person. She talked about her family always. Like someone had mentioned, her dedication to her career was far and beyond most. And we were just going to miss her in the Aldi world, in our Aldi family. And we just am um, so thankful that she's a faith believer, a woman of faith, and she's now rejoicing in heaven, looking down on this beautiful yeah, part yeah. of Well, uh, I don't know, I never talk in public, but I mean, it's, uh, I mean, I, that was my friend for 18 years. And I think uh, if I know a lot of stuff, it's for Minas because she teach me a lot. I love all this fine because she's love for she doing for more than 34 years. Yeah. All this fine. Every time we were working together, I always follow to her and she teach me. She always a smile. She never met. I never seen me as met for 18 years. We uh, I don't know. I miss her so much. And, uh, I think one memory and I told her one time and I said, hey Mina, we're working every morning and I said, hey, why do you not eat something? Maybe like a sandwich or something? She always, Pepsi and Twizzlers. <laughs> always, always. I and mean, Mina, that was your, your breakfast for morning? Yes, I love it. Okay, that's good. I always offer to bring like a, my Mexican food. But she's a picky person. No, she's a picky person. No, she's not. She don't like nothing. Oh, I mean, like, you like salad? No, I don't like salad. You like fruit? No, I don't like. It. She always Pepsi and Twizzlers. That's what she likes. But I mean, I mean, I mean, 
he's just so much. And I'll be dropping it in my car. Oh my gosh, I'm sorry. I'll tell you one thing, I learned something from the district manager. I always thought it was all D's with an S, but it's all D. All right, y'all done taught me something today. Come on, give them a hand, y'all. That was him. Always smiling, hardworking, modest, humble, patient, kind, loving. You know, Nina's life was a lesson to all of us. You know, just to let y'all know, Nina's always been a boss. She's a boss of everybody. Uh, but Nina's whole life was a lesson. Uh, she let us know move in silence. And actions speak louder than words. She didn't say much, but she did a lot. And when she did speak, it was very powerful. So somebody ought to clap their hands for the life that this woman lived. That was her career. Now, we will go into the family tree. Those uh, from the family, please come forth. A few, quickly. I want Sam to, come on Sam. Can't do it today. Okay. The family. Mama Ina, you feel it? Would you like something to say? Okay. Understood. I'm sick. All right. Family. Honestly, this is the hardest poem I've ever had to write. Normally, it all comes so naturally. Sit down, grab a pen, grab some paper, breathe. Write some words, feel some emotions, breathe. Write some words, plan some movements, research words that rhyme, breathe. But for this one, grabbing the pen is like touching the iron with my pinky when I was younger too much heat for me to handle too much pain for my hands to bear getting the paper is like breaking my arm when I was four too much weight for me to carry too much force breaking my bones writing the words feeling the emotions causes waves of tears to fall to the page smudging every letter I can't read tears begin to pool in my eyes as I try to hold them back because I know you would want me happy my vision begins to blur I can't see tears stop I know you want me happy so that's what I'll be I know you love me so that's what I'll think I break down tears flood words smudge and pages drenched in despair I can't breathe I can't figure out what to say because I just feel like nothing will be good enough I'm so worried about what everyone else will think about what I say for you but I think I finally understand that it's not about what other people think it's about how I feel so here I go Mom, giver and nurturer of life. Although I wasn't born into your household, you treated me no differently than you did your own. The love you gave brought presents when all I felt was alone. The love you gave, I promise, was never unknown. The love you gave will forever surround me like an eternal cyclone. The love you gave stuck to my skin like million dollar cologne and it smells just like you. A breath. When I think about you, all I can do is see you smiling. And I realize I can breathe. When I step back and reminisce on all the memories we shared, I realize that the pain I'm going through only shows how much I care. But knowing you're not in pain anymore gives me a breath of fresh air. Sad doesn't even begin to describe how I feel, but I'm happy to know that you're finally free. Free from hurt, from pain and despair, and free to see the loved ones who've passed on but still care. Although you're not here, I can still feel you around. The light that you gave is still shining so profound. I know you'll be with me in all that I do, and I'm grateful for a lot of things, but I'd like to name a few. 
right? Mm. Come on, Nephew. Thank you for giving me three, Mimi, and yes, Cameron, too. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for all that you've done. Thank you for the mixer that's made me, that's made me gain a couple pounds. Thank you for helping me smile, helping me find my smile when all I could do was frown. For being the glue that kept me a part of our family. For being there when I felt like everyone turned their backs. For every $20 I've ever borrowed from you, and yes, I say borrow, because you made sure I knew it didn't work like that. <laughs> Thank you for choosing dad to be the one who you loved so he could show me how to be there for my children. Thank you for being the beautiful soul that you were. Thank you for being the best mom anyone could ever ask for. Thank you for giving the four of us life, nurturing it, and then pushing us in the right direction. Thank you for accepting me. Thank you for showing the same love to my wife from day one. Thank you for being there on the biggest day of my life when my daughter was born and for loving her with no hesitation. Thank you for her shoes, her chair, and the only potty she's ever peed on. <laughs> Thank you for loving me. She, she did the one thing I had never ever, as old as I am, I have never ever had a man. And I went, seen her at Luther, and she was just getting finished with hers. And she said something to me about, well, when are you gonna get you one? I ain't never had one. When I went to go get one, I sat here and thought about what she said, and I went, and I went and got one. We found out I had cancer. So. Nina sat here, had it not a bit, just a little smirk, that little smile that she gave, you know, you need to go do this. I would have not done it. I would have waited and waited. Mine's with God's blessings and a lot of family blessings. Mine's got cured. Unfortunately, when it was Nina and it was turned around, I thought, boom, I can do this. She was there for me. I can be there for her. And that's not how things turned out. And a lot of times right now, I'm trying to deal with, well, it's, why wasn't it me? Me was such a good person. Well, why wasn't it me that, you know, maybe I should have had to go. But I think what God did was he took a good one to give those of us who are still here a chance for us to be just as good so we can see her again and the rest of our family. So for those of you who are here, especially you females, please, by all means, get it checked, get it done. That's all, I mean, that's what you can do for yourself. That's what Mina did, that's what I did. And 
if you do it, it can work for you. Like I said, God will be there for you because God was there for me, and God was there for me too. Some of y'all heard me talk yesterday, so I'm just gonna say a few things. Um, I love Nina, one of my favorite people in the world. Um, share a little story. A lot of y'all see the nice, smiley Nina. Um, I did Nina's hair when, I, when my dad finally stopped messing it up because they used to go to him and he was destroying it. And she gave me a shot. She told me, she said, you know, okay, color my grays, Brittany. Try to color them and they turn blue. <laughs> She got mad at me and she's like, okay, well, we're not gonna color these grays anymore. I'm gonna let them, I'm gonna embrace them, you know. Maybe I want I want some type of different color on the ends of my hair. So there's a bunch of different processes to do it. And I thought I had all the right colors to get her hair, the color that she showed me in the picture. And when I got to the shampoo bowl and I rinsed her out, I'm like, oh my God, he's gonna kill me. Her hair was orange. <laughs> and she said, Brittany, what did you do? <laughs> I'm like, uh, I mean, I can fix it. I'll put something else on it. I'll do something. I'll, I'll fix it. And then as it started to dry, she's like, you know what? Just leave it. Just leave it. I'm ready to go. I've been here all day. I'm ready to go. So she had that little little orange on the end of her hair. And then, you know, then she had me change it a few times, add some red to it. She was always trying to do, you know, something a little different, but still trying to embrace her grace. So. I love you, Nina. This is a hard day for us, but we're all going to make it through it because we have each other and we have God. And Nina will tell all y'all to shut up, stop crying, and get it together. <laughs> so, especially me. <laughs> Seems how she kicked me out of the hospital three times. So, love you, Nina. Thank you, family. That was beautiful. Ty, that was wonderful. Come on, give the family a hand. Now. At this time, we are going to go into the next door to We're going to have Superintendent Woods and Chairman Burrell. And after Chairman Burrell, we'll have Pastor Rachel Cameron, uh, all the way from New Albany, Mississippi, to come back to Elder Burrell. Superintendent. The first thing I have in my life to the 12 clergy from Ulysses Bay, Dr. Cameron, and uh, uh, his family, and all of you here showing their love to me. Just thank God for her. And you look back, and uh, one time she uh, came out of church, and then she decided to go over and help her cousin. And she was starting the church out. But it's been said, Nina was a loving person, a person that didn't have a lot of words to say. She had that beautiful smile. And so we're going to love her. We love her, but God loved her best. And that's what I said in the scripture. He prepared a place for us. He said, in my father's house would be the mansion. And that's so he said, I was going to told you. I go prepare a place for you. He said, where I am, you may be awesome. So we're going to miss me. Amen. But the also scripture let us know, even though he walked the valley of the shadow of death, she knew that she didn't have to fear any evil, that he would be there for her. So we thank God for all the beautiful tributes and remarks for me now. And they said, we're going to miss her. And but she's gone on to a better place. And no pain, no more suffering, no cares in this world. And just want to say to the family, we love you, we're praying for you, and you need to look to the hills to come to the hill. We want you to help come up from the Lord. God bless you. Amen. Let's give superintendent. God bless you. Amen. The 34th Psalm says, I will bless the Lord at all times. Sometimes we don't understand why we go through this. Sometimes we don't understand why we have to go through the things that we go through. But the Bible says, I will 
bless the Lord at all times. So can y'all help me bless the Lord? Come on, just bless the Lord. I know you'll feel better if you just bless the Lord. He said at all times. And then he goes on to say his praises shall continually be in my mouth. So if you just open up your mouth and tell the Lord, thank you. If you just open up your mouth and tell the Lord, Lord, I love you. Lord, I praise you. Lord, I magnify you. Even though I'm going through right now, I magnify you. And then he goes on to say, oh, magnify the Lord with me. And that word magnify means let's make it bigger. Not the situation, but let's make God bigger. Because we serve a great big God. And a great big God deserves a great big praise. So come on and praise him. Come on and magnify him. You'll feel better. Hallelujah. You'll feel better. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Listen, I want to say this before I take my seat. I talked to my cousin John. We're second cousins. And I asked him, I said, where did you meet me at? He told me he went on a date with her. One of her friends hooked him up. One of her friends hooked him up with her. So they went on this date. And I said, how did it go? He said, it went well. And then we had a second date. He said he went on that second date, honey, and that was the last date he went on with her because he never left her after that. So I thank God, cuz, that you found a great woman. And we always say this, besides a great man is a great woman. But I want to say this because I'm married into a sanctified family. You find a sanctified woman and she'll do one or two things to you. She'll make you get sanctified or you're going to have to find something else to do. So God, I know she's made you sanctified. I know she's put something down on the inside. And the Bible says a step to a good man. Well, I am by the Lord. God, he's going to hold your steps. And you're going to be all right. Give me praise. Give me glory. Give me my... Thank you, Jesus. Come on, give him praise. Glory, glory be to God. Wonderful Savior. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Hallelujah. Certainly, we can celebrate today and, and most part we're grieved on the inside but I think we, when we look at the bigger picture I think we can celebrate just like the other folks gave us we can celebrate being as alive quiet wonderful lady and uh, I, I, like I said this is this is my niece and, and I remember when she was born and uh, she was always quiet and seemed at times a little distant. But she was she was outside of like I said on last night, the norm. She was she was just different. And um, uh, we we're going to miss her. And uh, uh, she was beautiful. Yeah, yeah, was, yeah. Mina was uh she was beautiful physically, mentally, psychologically. She was beautiful on the inside. And you got, have you, are you looking at your pool? Man, that's beautiful teeth. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm telling you, that mouth is beautiful. And we're going to see her again. I mean, she was just beautiful. This young lady was beautiful. And uh, I, I used to term she is beautiful. We'll see her again. I hope. Jesus said he went away, you know, he said he was going to leave us another comforter. Uh, 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 he wouldn't leave us. Jesus said he wouldn't leave us as a comfort less uh, uh, orphanos. He wouldn't leave us as orphans. But he said he would send us another comforter, a paraclete, the one that go alongside us and comfort us in our time of grief. So I, I want to encourage not only I, yes we were miscarriage, beautiful on the inside and out, and and, and uh, John, the siblings, and my sister, 
and all of this wonderful family. You can uh, abide in the comfort of the Lord. He said he would never leave you or forsake you. And that he would send us another, another comfort that that is that paraclete, that one who goes alongside of us, the comfort of the Holy Spirit. Sometimes we might think that we just can't make it and it's impossible. But God said he would never leave us. He would never forsake us. And he would always comfort us. And even when you feel like the head is just above water, that he would always come to your rescue. So I, I pray that you will be comforted in that. And it's going to take some time. But we're all praying for you. We love you. And we're going to make it. How about that, saints of God? We're going to cover each other. And we're going to make it through this. Amen. God bless you. We have um, just one more that I'll be remiss to uh, overlook. But our assistant pastor has served with her for 15 plus years. And we just want him to come and have some words about uh, this queen here. Say amen for our assistant pastor, Elder Paul Hart. Come on. Amen. 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 I was sitting there thinking about Lena. Known her for a long time, but couldn't tell you what her favorite color is. Couldn't tell you what her favorite food is. Just found out it's Twisters. <laughs> but she was in the finance department, and a lot of times I'm the one who took the money to her. And I would stay down there as protection just in case someone would come in. And we've had a lot of conversations. There were simple conversations, but they were conversations. And I began to know her from that moment. And Pastor had put it over benevolence. And if you know my profession, my job, uh, the type of job I have, I have to do a lot of hard things for the state. I can't use emotion. I can't look at the situation. I got to do a lot of hard things. And I took the position because I knew I could make the decision and not let emotion get involved. And one day we're sitting there, we're looking over things and she said, and I said, well, I'm going to have to turn this down. You know, Mina, she had a heart for people. And she looked at me, she said, look, we ain't going to turn everybody down. And I said, what do you mean? She said, we can't do that. And she began to talk about why we should accept this offer or this, this petition for benevolence. And she got me to change my mind. So why am I saying all this? Sometimes she appeared to some people to have a hard exterior. But she had a heart second to none. She loved people. She loved helping people. And if there's anything I can take away from Mina and my relationship with her is that you can be quiet and strong at the same time. Amen. She may have clapped or beat sometimes, but she had a heart right on rhythm. And if you know anything about Mina, know this, is that she loved with everything she had. God bless you. Her sister pastor was stingy. He didn't want to give anybody no money. We serve on the board together. I don't either. <laughs> Amen. All of those tributes. Come on, just honor her one more time. They were all beautiful. That was our meeting. Amen. At this time, the choir is coming in song once again. As long as you are there. Under the direction of Miss Keisha Vine. Come on, give them a hand.
What a day. What a day that will be. No more pain, no more struggling, no more suffering. I don't know about you, but I just want to be ready. I just want to be ready. Nino was ready. Amen. We trying to get there. She made it there. Come on and clap your hands. At this time, Sister Lindsay is going to read an acknowledgement and a picture there. Amen. On behalf of the Revival Center, Church of God in Christ family, as well as the Azusa District's Department of Women, who our leader is Missionary Donna Guy, to the family of Sister Mina Williams, we, the Revival Center family, extend our love and condolences to you all in the loss of Sister Mina. She was one of our own and will be greatly missed by all. We are praying that the Lord will give you strength during this most difficult time. We hope to deliver words of condolences with this biblical verse. The righteous perish and no one takes it to heart. The devout are taken away and no one understands that the righteous are taken away to be spared from evil. Those who walk uprightly enter into peace. They find rest as they lie in death. That is Isaiah 57 verses one and two. May the outpouring of love you have received since Sister Mina has transitioned to heaven serve as a reminder to you and your family of how much she was loved by all and how you may continue to carry out that love to honor her legacy. If there is anything you need during this difficult time, please do not hesitate to reach out to us, the Revival Center family, for support. We are here for you all emotionally, spiritually, and physically. With love and sympathy, the Revival Center Church family and the Azusa District Department of Women. Church in the Now, Church of God in Christ of New Albany, Mississippi. No matter what your trials are or how big your mountain seems, the Lord is there to see you through. He'll go to all extremes. So if your cross seems hard to bear and you know not what to do, the one who loves you most of all will be there to see you through. The Church in the Now family wants Dr. Rayfield Cameron Sr., Elder Lawrence Cameron Jr., Sister Stella Berry, the Jones and Williams family, to know that our hearts are with you as you gather to bid a final goodbye to your beautiful, sweet daughter, mother, wife, sister, niece, aunt, and friend, Willa Mina Williams. Whereas, we believe the words of Jesus Christ in John 14 that encourages us to let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. Therefore be it resolved that we embrace her mother, Hazel Jones, and siblings, Kevin and Bosey, her husband, John Williams, and children, Brianna, Cameron, and Miana because all of us have a common bond that will connect us for the rest of our lives. We cannot replace Sister Mina because all of us have a common bond, but will attempt to demonstrate her love to you. We will continue to keep you all lifted up in our prayers. When it's all over, we would like you to remember, in case there's a time when you need some cheer, in case there's a problem you would like us to hear, in case there's a favor you would like us to do, we're here if you need us to help see you through. Humbly submitted on this 29th day of October, 2021, Dr. Rayfield and First Lady Cameron in the Church in the Now family of New Albany, Mississippi. Sister Mina and the family received many letters of condolence, um, and in the interest of time, we will not read them all, but we will acknowledge each of them. The LH4 District, Church of God in Christ, Iowa Jurisdiction, Administrative Assistant, Gerald Woods, Senior District Superintendent. The Iowa Jurisdictional AIM Department, 
of the Iowa Jurisdiction Kojic Headquarters of Des Moines, Iowa, where the chairman is Elder Charles D. Burrell, Sr. Emmanuel Church of God in Christ, Pastor John K. Hall, Sr. and First Lady Stephanie Hall. Learning of the Lord, Revival Ministries Incorporated, Church of God in Christ, where the leader is Shepherdess Dr. Suzanne O. Irwin Holmes, Senior Pastor, and Elder Mose Rudis III, Assistant Pastor. Iowa Ecclesiastical Jurisdiction of the Church of God in Christ, um, on behalf of Elder Marcus Green, the Jurisdictional President, Missionary Rochelle Evans, the Evangelist Elect Lady. East 17th Street, Church of God in Christ, Pastor Dr. M. Anthony Bell. And now to the obituary. Willa Mina Williams, also known as Mina. Willa Mina Williams was born September 9th 1969 to Hazel Lee Jones and Isel Carroll in Blue Mountain, Mississippi. Mina was educated in the local school district and graduated from Herbert Hoover High School in Des Moines, Iowa in 1987. Mina was a loving wife, mother, and sister. Her life involved three things, work, church, and family. Mina worked as assistant manager for Aldi for 34 years and was a member of Revival Center Church of God in Christ, serving as finance clerk and treasurer for 15 years. Mina was the epitome of a lady. She carried herself with class and grace. She was a foster mom who cared for many from infants onto teens. On October 22, 2021, Mina made her final transition from time into eternity after a brief battle with cancer. She was preceded in death by her grandparents, Lawrence and Eula B. Cameron, Uncle Charlie Cameron, Uncle Jimmy Cameron Sr., cousin Jimmy Cameron Jr. Left to cherish Mina's memory is her husband, John Williams. Children, Brianna Williams, Cameron Williams, Tyrell and Sadie Jones, and Miana Williams. Her mother, Hazel Jones, father, Izell Cameron, brothers, William and Kevin Jones, granddaughter, Zamaria Jones, godson, Josiah Pringle, mother-in-law, Ina and Sam Putney, her special cousin, James Pete Cameron, and Aunt Stella Berry, as well as other loving family and friends. Thank you. And I thank you for that reading. One previous, I think, uh, Thank you, Bishop Missionary Williams, as well. Uh, I want us to, I'm not here to advocate, but I kind of want us to get out the habit you know, of saying loss. When something is lost, you don't know where it is. Uh -huh. yeah. It's a little bit different with Nina because we know where she is. And so uh, she just transitioned. That's the word. She transitioned. One more time for the life. Clap your hands. There is a word from the Lord today. We're getting closer to that word. And after this next selection from this great choir, we will be in the hands of none other than our pastor, our leader, our shepherd, Nina's pastor. As, he, as this man of God comes with the word of God. At this time, we're calling on the choir on the direction of Mr. Gene Lattimore. Let's see. There were two people 
that Mina used to love to hear sing. And uh, that was Sister Lisa Hobbs, her best friend. Yes. And uh, Sister Rochelle Evans. And then Sister Rochelle's not familiar with this song. Adrian is going to uh, lead us in this song, but I would love to throw that mic to Sister Rochelle after we get to that band. Just uh, for a little bit. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Mina would definitely be smiling. She'd definitely be smiling. All right. Where's my sister at? There she is. I don't mean to put you on the spot, sis, but I just know that two people Mina really love. Really love to hear sing. Sister Lisa and Sister Missionary Rochelle Evans. Come on, give them a hand, y'all.
and I fought with this when she came to us and told us what was going on with her. Uh, I began to pray, and when I prayed, I just wanted to hear from God. And the only thing that God gave me was trust me. And he told me he got her. And then when he told me that, I wrote these words. And I, I didn't understand why I was even writing these because even until the last moment, I could not see us losing her. But when I look at even that word losing, I want you to understand that we teach and we have been taught that something that is lost is something that you don't know where it is. If you lose something, you have no idea where it is. You're asking somebody, have you seen this? Have you seen that? You tearing up stuff just to find it. So I want to say with assurance, we have not lost Mina. Because I indeed know where she is. Come on, somebody. And where she is is what is helping me through this. Oh, yeah, I know y'all see me shedding tears. But I still got some joy on the inside. Because I understand, come on, somebody, hallelujah, what God has done. I'm not going to be very long. I might want to just skip over some stuff here. Hallelujah. But uh, it's so much that I can say about her. I can talk about her and, and elder uh, dealing with the finances. And me, I was hard-headed. So I would turn around, uncle, and give somebody some money when Mina hasn't told me to. And when I do that, uh, as we have an intercessor with God, I had an intercessor with Mina. I would go to my wife and I would tell her, please explain to her what I had to do. Don't let her come back to me. Oh, see, y'all talking all that sweet stuff. Now, Mina was sweet as sugar, but y'all don't know the mean side. I had to deal with that one. Come on, somebody. Even when I got saved. Now, look, I told them at another funeral a while back ago, I was up here, and I said it was three people that ever bullied me. And it wasn't no men. Each and every one of you men better look me in the eye and know you ain't never bullied me. Jarvis, I don't care how tall you are. But one of them was Sister Lisa Perry. Another one was Sister Deb Carter. And she's here for me to tell her I'm not scared of you no more. And the next one was Mina. Hallelujah, because that's all what she can do. When I'm running in Oakridge for some people, she take a whole family and whoop all of them <laughs> behind me. But I was terrified, so I had that intercessor, which was my wife, and she would calm some things down. Next thing you know, I would come in the room, and I would ask, who you talking to on that phone? She'd say, Mina, I'd try to walk out the room real quick, and Mina would say something good and smart, and I'd just say, okay. But that was my sister. And I tell you, she was the best. Revival Center and anybody else, you can look at Mina's life and model yourself after that. There was not a member of this church that did what she did. I love each and every one of you. Thank God for each and every one of you. But she's never had a word back and forth with any of you. Come on, somebody. Because she means business. What would you say, Mother Hazel? With you? Oh, well, I could just imagine why. So, coming from where we 
come from. Mina was tough. She beat up Scott and Glenn. <laughs> Raise your hand, cousins. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Uh-huh. But one day, I called Mina, and I gave my life to the Lord. I called her, and I said, Mina, I'm saved. She laughed at me, <laughs> just like my wife did. And when she laughed, she said, stay saved for 90 days, and I'll get saved too. So 30 days passed. I'm, I'm getting ready to be real quick. This ain't Sunday morning. 30 days passed. And when those 30 days passed, she was on the phone with Shannis, first lady. And I said, who are you talking to? Mina, I'm always being nosy, wanting to know who she's talking to. Because she's talking to a man, I'm going to go through that phone and get him. <laughs> and I told Mina, I'm still saved. She said, I see. About 60 days went by. And I Sean was on the phone with Mina. I said, tell Mina that I'm saved and I'm sanctified and filled with the Holy Ghost. And Mina turned around and she didn't say nothing but mm-hmm. She started getting nervous because she know time is coming short. She wasn't a bad person. She wasn't out there doing no mess. But she knew that whatever it was, she was going to have to see Jesus. So then we get to going down to Mississippi. Pastor Warren had to preach. And Mina ended up going down there. And on that 90th day, we was in Mississippi. And Pastor Warren preached about Paul and Silas. Come on, somebody. And he had me sit beside him on the floor. And he told me that they were bound with chains. Said, but God set them free. And by that time, I looked over and I saw Mina with tears in her eyes. Then I got to the point to where it was altar call and she found her way to the altar. And when she found her way to the altar, she began to not only say yes, Lord, but she began to speak in tongues at the same time. See, sometimes God will do it all simultaneously. When your heart is ready, when you have your mind made up, God will do it all at the same time. If you say yes to the Lord, and you indeed mean yes, God will save you. God will deliver you. God will fill you. God will fill you. Hallelujah. He will, he will, he will. I'm almost there, y'all. I'm going to get there. I'm just testifying a little bit. But I look at this scripture. And when I look at this scripture, the things that stick out I didn't get to, they begin to talk, hallelujah, to Jesus after Lazarus had died. And when they talked to him after Lazarus died, one of them had an attitude. Oh, he was your best friend. Hey Amen. She had an attitude in the beginning. The friend that you love while you're sitting here lollygagging is sitting here sick. Oh my God. But Jesus said that sickness is not unto death. Now what I want you to understand, death, oh my God, simply means separation from God. Amen. To be separated from God. So he said this sickness was not unto death. But Jesus in turn said, I am the resurrection. And I am the life. Go, oh, oh my God. He be dead if you believe in me. If you trust in me. If you have given your heart to me. Yet shall you live. I don't hear nobody talking back to me. So I want you to understand. Yet shall she live. Oh my God today. Yes, I'm not going to see her for a while. And I want to say for a while. Because I will get to see her again. I heard him saying the song. I'm not worried about those sights. I won't be there to enjoy the view. But I, as long as you're there, I don't hear nobody talking. 
I'm not ready yet. I got so much more that I want to do. But let me tell you, hallelujah, when God calls your name, you're going to wish you was ready. And it ain't about scaring somebody into it because it's about love and kindness. It's about the love of God. He loved us so much that he gave his only son. His son loved us so much that he gave his life. But it did not stop right there. He rose again. And he rose again for you and for me. Is it anybody in here tonight that will say yes, Lord? That will say yes, Lord. That will say save me, Jesus. Anybody in here today that wants to rededicate your life to God? I'm not saying that it's going to be easy because let me tell you something, it's not easy. Hallelujah. But sometimes we think we serve up. A messed up type of God. But God is merciful. He's faithful and just to forgive us from our sins. And to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So what about you? I know you get tired sometimes. We lay down and wake up. Do the same thing over and over and over again. Not realizing that without Jesus, everything we do does not amount to anything. Hallelujah. So will you choose Jesus? Because Mina going to be waiting for us. She already did her job. What about you? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, somebody praise him right now. See, God inhabits the praises of his people. Go ahead and praise him. Go ahead and praise him. Because if you praise him, you'll feel better. You praise him, he'll begin to touch your heart. going to make everything better. Somebody shout yes, Lord. When you make that decision. Oh my God. Everything's going to be alright. Sometimes you might not be able to see it with your natural eye. Come on somebody. But you can call all those things that be not as though they were 
Somebody shout yeah! <laughs> and I'm not telling you that you have to do that in order to get eternal joy and that alone, but you can get joy right here where you are. Song said you don't have to wait until the battle is over, but you can shout now!
we're going to do is we're going to do this last viewing and we're going to have the family go last. So all friends, colleagues and whatnot, y'all rise up and we're gonna be ushered from the back. You're gonna, you're gonna exit out this way. You're gonna come around, come up the middle aisle and exit out on that side. If you're going to go to the cemetery, we ask that you put on your flashers, your hazards. We are going out to Oral Labor. It's in Ankeny. So don't worry about it, just get in line and you'll be able to find it. Amen. Oh, 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 oh,
us go in. You will let us go
Jesus. 